The use of laser in the larynx um, has taken a uh, circuitous path from its early introduction um, there were certainly case reports, but it didn't really catch on until our European colleagues, um, Dr. Steiner, Dr. Ambrosch, and many others, um, really brought it to the forefront. And what's happened with radiation is radiation had taken over and become the primary modality for early laryngeal cancer um, as a primary example of T1 and T2 glottic and supraglottic tumors. And through the work that's been done through our European colleagues and through leaders here, doctors, Pearson, Hoey, Salasa, um, and many others, they have shown that there is an equal benefit. And much work has been done to show that voice outcomes can be equivalent, the uh, low risk of complications, the lack of late term complications, the cost savings benefit to the patient. Um, all of those things become very dramatic in terms of the increased utility of why we do transoral laser microsurgery. Function preserving technique by not deconstructing the larynx to get there, being able to approach this through the mouth and take out tumors in this new piecemeal fashion has really revolutionized how we think about cancer today and brought the minimally invasive techniques that are applied all over the rest of the body to head neck cancer. Transor laser microsurgery is superior to radiotherapy, which is often an overtreatment. Small tumors are often removed by the diagnostic biopsy. The oncological results are without any doubt better after laser surgery than after radiotherapy. We have less local recurrences, less salvage laryngectomies uh, than after radiotherapy. And uh, the morbidity is lower, the complication rate is lower, and the functional results uh, for, uh, for early lesions is similar after radiotherapy and after laser. In 2009, I think there's no level A evidence-based medicine to determine which treatment modality, laser surgery or radiation therapy, is optimal for the treatment of laryngeal cancer. And I think in some ways it's the wrong question to be asking. I think that there are certain tumors that are going to be treated better with surgery and there are certain tumors that are going to be better treated with radiation therapy. So it becomes a very complex process based on the stage of the tumor and the site of the tumor. Um, with experience, surgeons can certainly tackle more and more advanced stage tumors, but is that the right thing for the patient? And that's something that we typically decide through the use of a multidisciplinary tumor board and through frank discussion with the patient about the pros and cons of what the approach may be. Early glottic cancer is establishing itself as an area where there's a great utility of CO2 laser. We're also seeing increased use in more advanced stage tumors, oropharyngeal tumors, hypopharyngeal tumors. In terms of making those decisions, you have to have an open and honest discussion with the patient in terms of what risk benefits they're willing to accept, in terms of the difficulty up front associated with surgery versus the late-term effects of the radiation or chemotherapy. The therapeutic management of moderately advanced and advanced cancer of the upper areal digestive tract has noted, notably changed during the last decades. Progress is in radiotherapy and in surgery as well as the development of, of effective chemotherapy regimens have shifted many paradigms. The results of radical mutilating surgery were worldwide disappointing. More and more laryngologists were looking for alternatives to avoid mutilating surgery like total laryngectomy. In the last two decades, we could show that trans or laser microsurgical resection is an efficient treatment in comparison to open surgery for moderately and more advanced tumors. The oncologic results are similar, the functional results are better, and the morbidity lower. Data are also incurring that TLM is oncologically sound for selected salvage resections following failed radiation. Surgery, ideally by endoscopic approach, for early cancer. So then if you discuss about advanced cancers like uh, T4, usually you, you, you need to do them by open neck approach. 
and uh, chemo radiotherapy was very popular during the last let's say 10 years but now there's a comeback because uh, uh, they said that this is uh, organ sparing you, you spare the organ thing to the chemo yes you spare the organ but you lose a function because there's a lot of uh, fibrosis and uh, maybe the larynx is still there after chemo radiotherapy but it doesn't move and uh, or the patient is not able to breathe the patient is not able to speak the, the patient is not able to swallow and uh, my colleague Lawson, Josh Lawson and me we are to perform functional laryngectomy it means that we have to we have to resect the larynx because it's just not functioning. There's no cancer, but the larynx is not functioning. So, and uh, for the patient to be able to swallow, they prefer, uh, they accept the resection of the larynx to be able to swallow again. So uh, I would say that, of course, you have to discuss according to the profession of the patient. If the patient is a very important voice user, Maybe you would say, let's take the chance from our early cancer with radiotherapy. Yes, but then you have to be very careful, careful, careful of the follow-up. Uh, but usually surgery is accepted, endoscopic surgery is accepted. So if you are able to have a nice exposition of the lesion by endoscopic approach, definitely we would perform endoscopic surgery. And so far for the endoscopic surgery, laser and CO2 laser is the best tool.